Hey, welcome. We're going to talk about introduction to Twitter. This is going to be just a how to get started, assuming you don't, you've never used it, and want to find out what is Twitter and want to get on the bandwagon. Twitter, to me, is a social media tool, and when I talk about social media, to me, social media is three things. It's listen, learn, and share. And Twitter is a perfect example of, of this. With it, I can keep up with what many of my friends are doing today, what's going on in the world. My stories break on Twitter before they even hit the mainstream media. I can discover new information, fresh content that just web, that just went up on the web page, on the website, much sooner than I could any other way. I get daily tips from IT tip of the day. It's ITTOTD. I learn about gardening, technology, get several doses of humor throughout the day, and much more. I've also share what I'm learning, what I'm discovering, what just what I'm doing in my life. Over the last few years, it's served me as a way to reach out and make social connection, especially when I needed them the most. I was able to journal my thoughts and be heard and know that I was being supported by people out there. A couple of years ago, I was digging a uh, crawl space to make a cellar. And I've been tweeting my progress over a month or two or three. And I was working late one night, and just before I was getting ready to quit, I hit and cut a water line. And after getting it all taken care of, now it's after midnight, I tweeted some of the fact that a sharp shovel is not the best tool to use to discover a water line when digging under the house. And it was more of a way for me to vent my frustration to the world and share my foibles with the world and friends, mostly with the fr my friends. But it was probably one of my most commented on tweets. I got more comments and feedback from that one. I think more people laughed at me on that than anything I've posted. But it it was a way for me to to connect with my friends and emotionally, if not physically, and know that they were supporting of me and being that that they were at least there. I was able to be heard. So it's a it's a great tool to be able to listen, learn, and share. Here's the obligatory numbers as of today, depending on your sources. About 200 million users, about 177 million tweets sent each day, 800,000 search queries a day. The Pew Internet study showed that 13% of U.S. Internet users now use Twitter, up from just 8% in November. So that's it's growing huge. 460,000 new accounts created every day. Now, a lot of those are what I consider spam accounts, but there's 460,000 accounts that Twitter's having to deal with. 20.6 million adults, U.S. adults, and U.S. is not even in the top 10 as far as penetration. There's a lot of other countries that have much higher rates of penetration than the U.S. It is the ninth, ninth most popular website in the world. And again, that Pew study showed that African Americans and Hispanics, and US American online African Americans and Hispanics, are really taking to it a lot at a exponential rate to where 25% of African Americans are using it occasionally and at least 11% use it daily. So its use is getting, it's increasing exponentially. That's why you'll see occasionally see this Twitter is over capacity, and this is called the fail whale. When you see this, it means that Twitter's just got more use than it can handle at the moment, and they're growing and handle, having growing pains. And they've been having growing pains since they were started in 2006, but they're still having growing pains. They're getting less and less. I haven't seen the fail whale in quite some time, so that's a good sign. But what is Twitter? It's a microblog. It's a way to communicate 140 characters at a time, so you have to, it forces you to be really concise and quick and to the point and just get your point down. It's, it's a communications tool, just like a telephone is a communications tool. It's to like text text messaging, it's even been called SMS of the Internet. 
um, I like to think of it as a big dinner party where all my friends are at this dinner party and I can be participating in several conversations all going on at the same time. So it's it's a neat tool, it's a neat um, website feature uh, service. So let me share my screen and we'll go and play and get started with using uh, Twitter. If you can see my screen, give me a green check mark by the on the participant list at the bottom right corner of the participant list. There's a green check mark. All right, great. Just like to make sure everybody's with me. Things are working properly. So this is my Twitter homepage, and here you can see what's it's like a stream, a river of information that just flows along, and every couple of minutes or so it'll update and there'll be It'll show me what's new being said. So here I can see Karen is listening to Ron and me talking about Twitter. So that went to everybody that's Karen's following. I posted a tweet one time when I was frustrated with Charter Cable. And Charter Cable heard me and they responded. And I'd spent time, uh, a good bit of time on the phone with their person. And I just said, hey, I am frustrated with Charter Cable. Their service is great, but they're they didn't do what they told me they would. And they ended up making it right. So I got much better service from Twitter than I did on the phone talking to a real person. And the reason for that is on Twitter, they know that I am reaching hundreds of people. And each one of those people, in turn, can reach hundreds of people. Whereas on the phone, if I'm frustrated, who am I going to tell? Two or three people, maybe? So Facebook really helps make it... Um, Facebook, Twitter, really helps me be able to get the word out to a lot of people very quickly. You look at what's happened in Egypt and, and uh, Saudi Arabia and how Twitter has really helped those revolutions occur. So to get an account, let me go ahead and log out real quick. I'm going to go over here and sign out. And Lynette, do you have a Twitter account? Oh, Robert joined us. You hear it's advertising all the, the different tools you can use to get it plugged into your mobile device. If you have an account, you can sign in. If you don't have an account, where's the create a new account? Let me just Go back to Twitter.com because it knows that I had an account. But go to Twitter.com, and if you don't have an account, you put your name and your email address and a password and sign up. If you do have an account, you put your name in here. I hope I remember the password. If you have a Twitter account, give me a green check. If you do not, click on the red X in the lower right-hand corner of the participant list. I know Karen does. Robert, do you have a Twitter account? Okay. All right, great. Okay, so we don't have to go through creating the account. It's straightforward. You follow the instructions and you get your account created. So here's my account. The first thing I'm going to want to do when you use it is go and uh, go to your settings and update your email. On time zone, things like that. Do you want tweet your locations added to your tweets? Probably not. But if you do that, it lets Twitter know where you are sending from, and it'll even put that in your 
tweets. Um, protect my tweets. This method, so just people I approve can see my tweets. And when somebody goes to follow you, they can't follow you directly. They have to request that you allow them to follow you. So that's a, if you want to do that. My recommendation is not only put on Twitter what you want the world to see and don't worry about it. Change your password. Mobile. This is where you can add your telephone number. So if you have a your a cell phone, you can put your cell phone in here and I I took mine out to do this. Um and you can put your phone number in and you send a text message to the number 40404 and in this case I send a message saying go and it would then re register my phone as being allowed to send messages to this number so I'm not going to do that right now but once I've got that phone used or that phone registered with my Twitter account then I can send post tweets to my account from my cell phone by sending a message to 40404 and whatever I, that text message would uh, would appear on my Twitter account as my post. Notifications. This is how do you want to get notified. So I get emails whenever, basically whenever anything happens with my account or somebody mentions me, somebody sends me a direct message because I may not be following, I may not have Twitter open, I may not be checking it today. So this lets me get in and or be notified in multiple ways other than just through the Twitter to a Twitter client or the Twitter website. Profile. This is where you can put your picture. If you don't have a picture, it puts a little egg on there. You said a little bird, but now since you haven't started, I guess it uses an egg following the bird theme. Your name, location. This bio is, I feel that's important to put at least a little bit about who you are. If you want to follow somebody or somebody wants to follow you to see is this the right person, if you follow somebody, then if you follow me, I'm going to look and say, who are you? And try and figure out why are you following me? And a lot of times I'll block people. If I don't know who you are, I feel it's like a company trying to get me to buy their stuff, I will block them. And that keeps them from sending me text messages and it keeps them from following my stuff. Now they can go to the website and see my my tweets but it doesn't let them follow me so it's not coming in their stream of messages in design you can go and change the layout of your Twitter homepage um, it's got all kinds of nice pretty things you can change your background images things like that applications are what programs have you allowed to connect to your Twitter account so I've got Lanyard where it can see and basically these things can post to my Twitter account. So Facebook can can uh, post a message to my Twitter account. So I or back, actually um, when I send a when I post something to Twitter, it goes to my Facebook. You can have it go the other way. I keep Facebook more private, so. I don't want everything that I put on Facebook to go to Twitter. I use Twitter as my more public stuff. So everything that I post to Twitter, I don't mind going to Facebook. But I don't want it to go the other way. And I've got an Android, so I've got a couple different Twitter apps that I've tried on playing on with those. Meetup. So different programs that I've let have access to my um, Twitter account. TweetDeck is a a uh, Twitter client that lets me read and follow my Twitters or follow what's going on and post and do everything instead of having to come to the website and I'll show that in a few minutes but I find the clients a lot better and easier to use than the websites for most daily stuff occasionally I'll come to the website but 90% of the time I'm doing most everything I do in Twitter using a client like face like Twirl or TweetDeck and there's hundreds of them or from online services. Okay. 
Um, here's where you can see your follow who's following you, who, who you're following. Um, when I want to post a message, I type it up here and answer what's happening. I just type in whatever my tw my message is. So. talking about Twitter. And if I want to, a lot of times you'll see hashtags, and that's a way of saying it's a, a keyword, and it makes it more searchable. And I can use that hashtag. So when we go to Netsy, we'll use, I think it's Netsy, or Ace Netsy 2011, or I think that's what it is. And what, they'll let us know what the hashtag is. But I can use that hashtag in any of my messages, and I can, I can, uh, everybody can follow that and search for that hashtag, and make it easy to find all the messages that are being, all the everything that's being said about that conference. And then I can also say, but with at Elaine Carroll. And that'll say Elaine Carroll's in here. And I forget what Rhonda's R. Colin. I think Rhonda's is R. Colin. So I can put that in here and uh, hit enter. And that goes out to everybody. So I tweet it. And now that's going out. I see Ann Adrian's posted something. Ann and I started about the same time. And that's I recommend when you're getting started. I think it's good to have at least one or two people that you're starting with or that you're connected with. And we knew each other, but we saw each other once a year at Ace Netsy's or at the Netsy conferences. So we we knew each other, but not well. Well enough, we'd have dinner somewhere during the week. We'd be at the same table. But through the first three or four months that we started playing with Twitter, I got to know Anne on a lot deeper level. I got to know that she's got kids and two daughters and where they go to school and what she does in the afternoons. And she's play, she's her kids are in softball and she goes jogging and what she's doing as a as a person on that personal level and what her interests are, but then I also got to see exactly what is she doing in work. So here she's sharing links, and she, when she writes something, she'd post it here. And when she discovered something interesting, she'd post it there. I felt we're doing a lot of the same work and similar stuff, and she's learning stuff before I do, and so we were both learning from each other. And it made it really good for us to, to, to start together and learn how to use Twitter together. When we got to the conference, the Ace Nessie conference that year, we made a point to see each other. And when we met, we weren't picking up from, what have you done for the last year? Our discussion started, well, what's going on since you left the airport? I mean, what's going on in your life now? It's like coming up with a, a friend, that somebody that you've been working with down the hall. You know what they've done yesterday. What, what's going on today? So it, had a much richer, much deeper conversation, and the next year we ended up giving a couple presentations together, and it was attributed all to being following each other off on Twitter and building that relationship. So to me, it's a relationship building or maintenance tool, just like all their social media is. Any questions? As I go on, any questions? that I mentioned, I used the at sign, and that's how you reference somebody, is to say, hey, I want to say, I want to mention Rhonda in my message, I would use at R. Conlon. And that says, she knows that she was m mentioned in a in a tweet somewhere, and she can get find those, me those tweets where she's been mentioned. So it helps, makes it easy to keep her in the conversation. It also lets everybody that's following me know, oh, there's Rhonda Conlon. And you can click on that link and go and find her and see what's go here. I can go view her full profile, see who she's fo or that I'm following her. Um, I am getting 
messages from her sent to my text phone, so when she sends a tweet, um, I can make it. Oh, I can retweet. Oh, it's not being sent to my cell phone. I think I've turned that off to everybody. But I can make it so that when she sends a tweet, that it'll go to my cell phone. So there may be three or four people that I want everything that they say I want to find out about. And when I first started using Twitter and was only following eight or ten people, that was great to get them all to come to my cell phones because I kept up with everything. I want to send Rhonda a message that's just between me and her. I can click on this envelope and send it to her. Or in my up here, I can say DM for direct message and then type my message. And that would send a message just to Rhonda. Nobody else would see that except Rhonda. Here, I can mention her, and it'll put her at R. Collin in my message. I can create lists. So here's my list that I have. So I've got Rhonda on my extension list and my personal. She doesn't. I'll put her on my tech and social media list too. That's more people who tweet. Who in my list? That's I have people who tweet about technology or social media in that list. Or I can go and create a new list. So now I can go to my list and see all the people that are that I've got categorized. So I can manage my Twitter account a lot easier by doing that. Another thing I can do is retweet. And I can use that. Here she posted a message when I pause over it. I can click on retweet. If I click reply, it'll it'll just start at R. Collin and then something, whatever my message is, so it'd be a way to reply to her. You notice here she's talked about Anne Adrian and Wake Master Gardener is asking for help to get the word out about this, and here's the link. Most of the links you'll see are using link shorteners, URL shorteners because you are limited to 140, 140 characters. Retweet would let me just re repost this message. And you can see, let me see if there's somebody, see if she's retweeted something. I'm going to go back to my home and see if I can find one that's been retweeted. Here, RT, that means retweet. So Anne is retweeting me on W Science this message. So they originally posted this. So Anne, instead of plagiarizing them and reposting the same thing, this lets her share what they've said and attribute it to Armed, Service, Armed W Science. Okay. How do you find people that are using Twitter? Um, one way is when you find somebody. I'll, I can go to the FFFCOP, Families, Food, and Fitness. And over here I can see who they're, who's following them and who are, who are they following. So if it's somebody that's doing something that I'm interested in, I might want to go and see what are they following. I can go look and see are they posting stuff that's of interest to me. Does this look like stuff that I care about? If so, then I might want to follow them. If not, I don't follow them. Um, there's lists. So here she's. This food family, families, food, fitness, COP is on 37 lists, and I can follow these lists. So that's a way to to get it. Or these are lists that are following. So here's GR8 trainers uh, list. So I could follow this list. And it would follow everybody that's, that this list is following. You can create private lists. You can create public lists. So there's lots of ways to use the lists. I keep looking over to my Illuminate screen to make sure anybody's having questions. You can type it in there. If you type something in the chat window, raise your, raise your hand so I can know to, to look over there. When you raise your hand, the bell goes off. 
And so there's other ways to find Twitter users, and one is to search, use this who to follow, and you can go and find friends. Here's people that they're recommending based on people that I'm following, and go browse by interests. I can find friends and use my email account, and I'll search everybody that I'm search my email addresses for people that are on Twitter. And another one is is uh, Lanyard, and Rhonda's going to talk about Lanyard. Thanks, John. Sounds like I'm up. Um, so Lanyard is a is a tool that it, I think it's a fairly new tool. Um, it isn't in widespread use, but we're just giving it a try for ACENET C, and, and it's a tool that's designed all around conferences. I, um, the people that wrote it have, um, you know, realized that there was a need to sort of bring people together at conferences. Some of you might have attended conferences where um, you'll see a lot of people tweeting. Some I've been to. Um, in the past year or two, even we'll have a separate screen up sometimes in the in the big ballroom area and just have the tweet stream coming up. You know, it's used quite a bit. So, um, so Lanyard is a tool that um, Jason Young found, and he wanted to give it a try for ACENETSI, and so we're doing that. And um, what we've done with Lanyard is we've entered all of the um, all of the events that we have. I mean, all of the breakout presentations that we have going on. And it's especially neat for um, presenters, but it's also good for attendees. And for new Twitter users, it's that one place where you can go related to a conference where you can find, you know, who was at this conference? What are they saying about it? Who are those people um, who have um, the same interests that I do? I just saw John told me that I've got um, access to his screen. So let me see if I can get signed in here. I've been signing in. Um, oh, I'm signed in as John Dorner. That's fine, John. We can I can stay signed in as you. Um, and uh, and this is John's main screen and he's probably already expressed an interest in our conference Ace Netsy. But if you haven't if you're new coming in here you can search for Ace Netsy and then look for the conference links for that. But let me just go here quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to just um see if we can pique your interest. The way Lanyard works is it actually is one of those applications like John showed you that um has to access your Twitter information. So when you come in here, um, you know you'll you'll want to have a Twitter account, and you'll want to give Lanyard access to your Twitter um, information so that it can share that. But um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I know this isn't the greatest in um, Illuminate, but um, you can through this application you can identify speakers and tie speakers to the sessions that they're doing. And um, another neat thing about Lanyard is that suppose Anne, um, which we know Anne speaks at a lot of conferences, if other conferences that Anne is at use um, Lanyard, then eventually you'll see her whole list of um, conference engagements and presentations that she's done. As a new Twitter user, you might use this to um, see, wow, Anne speaks about things that I'm really interested in. I want to follow those things. And I want to see what the Twitter hashtag is for these items that Anne is speaking at, these conferences that Anne is speaking at, because then I can follow those hashtags and I can see things that Anne might be talking about. So just a great way to um, in our case, to link up with um, presenters and with attendees. Um, so what we've done so far, and, and Lanyard is very much crowdsourced. We want everyone who's interested in using this to jump in and help us add content to this. But we have a lot of the presenters identified. We have a lot of the subcommittee chairs identified if they've got Twitter accounts. If I scrolled all the way down to the bottom, you'd see we've got attendees, people that have come in and said that they're attending. So um, it's just a good way to get everybody's um, Twitter information. You can see their Twitter accounts, and if you click on their names, Again, you'll have that option as you're logged in to follow them. And I think that's all I'm going to say about this right now, John, because I don't want to take too much more time out of your section. Thank you. Another way to, to find people is to uh, 
use the e extensions tools, the people tool. And if we go to the extension people site and go to colleagues, find colleagues, you can search by social networks. And that brings up here. You can also here by social when you go to by social network, it'll bring up the different social networks that are available. And we've got 421 e extension people who are using Twitter. People have e extension accounts who are using Twitter. So here's where you can go and find who they are and what their what their account name is. Since Anne has the honor of being AA, she comes up at the beginning a lot, so we can click here and it'll take me to her home page, to her Twitter account page, and I could follow her from there if I wasn't already following her. So that's another way to, to find people. Another way is your business cards, your website. Um, you'll see the little T logo on all kinds of websites to find, to be able to follow people. Um, just the main way I find them is when somebody says something or retweets something that, that I'm, somebody I'm following retweets something somebody else follows and it's of some of interest to me. Then I'll go and look and say, hey, is this something that I'm interested in? And if so, I'll follow them. Another way I find out about people is when they follow me, I get an email and it says, so-and-so is now following you, I'll go look and say, oh, is, are they of interest to me? It's like sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. I talked about using different uh, tools, different clients to use for tweet for Twitter. And one that I've used for a long time is called Twirl. Twirl. By seasonic. But I like this tool, it's very nice. And here, NC State IES told me to tell Rhonda, she said, hey. And it, see this one, they started out with the at J Dorner, and that color coded it green because they said they're talking to me. What I'm talking about is in gray. Here, Jeanette's listen, or Karen's listening to me. I can look here and see all the replies. So here's things that I've that have been replied to me or mentioned myself. Here's direct messages. Um, Jennifer Scott Sykes. I found she tweeted tweeted something about being at a local pub here in Asheville. She's from Gainesville, Florida, and I see her at the Ace Metsy conferences each year. And then last night she tweeted or yesterday afternoon she tweeted she was at the nachos at this pub are really good. I said, oh, you're in Asheville. You must be the one who brought all this heat here. And she replied back, so you call this hot? I said, what are you doing? And I said, I'll be in town this evening. But uh, if we wanted to, we could have hooked up and gotten together. And if she wasn't busy that evening, we could have gotten together and had dinner or something. But it let me know that, hey, I've got a friend that's in my in my town. So it's a way to do that. You can search. You can look up people, list all your friends, look at your favorite messages, archive messages, go to your home. I type my message in here. And this is, it's a nice, compact, nice little message. Click on home. When I finish reading these, I can send them all to the trash and then just start fresh and it just has a stream and every minute or two, five minutes, it'll show the new messages from people that I'm following. Another tool that I like, and I've tried this one several times before and didn't like it until I just tried it recently, and I think I like this one better. Now they've finally got the features, got it working to where it, it fits the way I like to work. So now I think I might switch over to using TweetDeck instead of Twirl. One of the things that TweetDeck does is let you use this uh, lists and searches and have lots of different streams of information. So here I've got a bunch of different streams that I can create and follow. 
And the thing I didn't like about it before was it was always these multiple streams, and you could have one, two, three, four, but I, it didn't have this way to do it to manage to switch between them easily, and they didn't have the single column view, which I like. So I didn't want it taking up my full screen all the time. But there's times when I do. So here's my, my personal, these are things that I'm personally interested in. So this is my personal list. And this is the one I will keep track of mostly. I want to check the news. Here's where I've got NPR, actual news in here. But this is where I can keep up with what's going on on the public media. The uh, Red Cross is in here. But this is where I can, the, the mainstream media. These are people who talk about tech and, and social media. Direct messages, here's things that uh, that are going on that are just private between, like in this case, it's just between me and Jennifer. Here's the, here's people from Extension. So I've got a list of just Extension people, and it's also I have some uh, Extension offices, 4-H clubs, things like that. I put in this Extension list. The list of humor. And there's where I can go and list to find my car talk is in here. It's uh what is this? Funny one liners are always they come a couple times a day, I'll get a little laugh out of that. Mentions these people who have mentioned me, so I can pull those and listen pull those see who, see what's being said about me. And then I can also go and search. And this search one I searched for the hashtag or my plate. And if I put a hashtag in there, what it does is it's searching all the Twitter posts, tweets, whatever you want to call them, that have the hashtag my plate in them. So the USDA has come up with a new food guide pyramid. And here it is. So if I wanted to keep up on what's being said about my plate, Anybody who uses that hashtag makes it easier to find it. I can also search for other things. I could put extension in here or search for cooperative extension. And here's where I can start see who's mentioning the word cooperative extension words. But this is a nice one I can use to search for things and keep up with what's being said about that certain topic. So I'm sure that the guy from Charter Cable is using a tool similar to this and has got search set up for Charter and Charter Cable. So whenever somebody mentions Charter Cable, he can look at it and say, oh, great, and make a reply and at least let them know, hey, I heard you. I heard what you're, what you're, what you're saying. Any other, any questions? Does that give you uh, a start to a great to, uh, way to come and get started using Twitter and how to use it? Any thoughts? Any discussion? If you have a microphone, you feel free to turn it on. Oh, and what you what you post on Twitter, if your posts are public, they are indexed by Google. I see Carol, Carl found out about it through a Google search. And I think the only way we post it is through Twitter publicly. Oh, maybe the e extension page might have found it. John, you could, um, if you wanted to, just this morning we linked some, um, we made some Twitter changes to the acenetc.org website that you could show the group like how we're intending to use. Um, just quickly, we can show you one of the ways we're intending to use um, Twitter at Ace Netsy, if some of you are here to see that. If you just go to acenetsy.org. Um, oh, here, here's our search for Ace slash Netsy, and you can see somebody yeah, mentioned it. Yeah, it's good.
Oh, I guess it's a little bit off your screen, but um, what we're doing now is we've got the three most recent um, tweets posted on the ACENETC, on every one of the acenetc.org pages so, so that we can use this for announcements. So um, if there are important announcements we want to get out um, to one place where people might see them. They don't go to web pages so much, but that's one place. And then, John, if you actually click on the little Twitter icon right above there, this is where we're capturing the whole um, hashtag stream. And so hopefully there will be a lot of people tweeting at the conference and and you'll be able to, you know, follow the session that you're in, but you'll also see tweets coming out of other sessions that you're not in and it might help you um, get a little bit more information out of the conference. Or if you can't attend the conference, um, people will, you know, usually tweet like those really memorable little nugget um, statements that presenters make and so some of those will be captured here so you can follow our hashtag and, and see those. Thanks, John. Yeah. And there's let me see uh it, there's tools that you can use to put widgets to put your your Twitters on any website. So just like they've got theirs there on your blog, you can go and get your tweets put on your blog or whatever page. So, like I said, a couple of us work on this IT tip of the day, and here's the last four tweets from that. There's a nice site, I didn't mention CoTweet. Uh, TweetDeck will let you schedule Twitters. CoTweet is nice because it lets multiple people work together for, on the same account. Let me sign in to a tweet. And so here is where what's going on. If we look at scheduled, so this is, I've got both my IT tip of the day account and the my data owner account. So I can post messages from either of these. I can read messages from here. I can look at the sent messages. I look at scheduled messages. So here, you see Vince Verbeck and I, mostly Vince Verbeck now, are posting to IT tip of the day. We send it out each morning at 8 a.m. So this is how we schedule those events. So whenever I can look here and say, okay, I've got a tip that I want to put out there. I look our last one scheduled for next for Wednesday. I'll schedule one for Thursday and put it on there. And Robert asked about search.twitter.com. Anything you want? What do you? What question or comments about search? If I can type. Okay, just find it very useful. You can use this instead of a tool like TweetDeck. So this is where you can use search for I uh, search for the same thing. Yes, Lynette? On co-tweet, how do you retweet something? Let's see. Up here, there's a little box for when I'm reading the message. There's a little button for retweeting. The other way to do it is when you're sending your message, just type RT space at whoever it is, space, and then your message. that answer your question, Lynette? Any other questions, thoughts, discussion?
I find there's times in my my life when I use Twitter more than others. I it's a cycle. There's times where I post a lot to it, and times when I don't. Times when I'm following it a lot closer than times than I don't. If I'm really busy, I don't have time to be doing the learning stuff. I don't even start it during the day. But when I've got a little bit of time and I want to keep up with what's going on and I don't mind having that interruption, I just open it up and have it running on the side of the, on a different screen all day. Just keep it going. And I'll just look, glance over there and say, so, oh, okay, that's nice, and keep moving, keep doing whatever I want. Yeah, Karen mentioned the finding people with similar interests using the search tweet. When you find somebody who's who's posting about the same, using your keywords in their post, might be somebody you want to follow and see what are they to posting other stuff about that. I even use search.twitter.com sort of like I use Google now because sometimes I can find out more current information through that than I can through Google. Just like John, you were saying a lot of times the news hits Twitter before it hits the news. You can get a, a different perspective of it too. Okay. Well, that is all I had prepared to talk about. I hope you can you're interested and can see how this could possibly benefit you. It's one of those things like any tool, it's another tool in the toolbox. Yeah, good point. Karen mentioned it's more connecting with people than websites. Exactly. It's it's social, it's that discussion, it's having that discussion with people and being in, involved with them. Knowing what they're talking about. Some companies use it just as posting their what they're doing or they're trying to sell stuff. But I think the successful ones are the ones who are using it to to give some insight and personality to their companies and to listen are the ones who are really doing that, using it advantageously. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming, and I hope to see at least some of you in Denver in a couple weeks. Thanks for coming, everyone. We'll post this recording soon.